The mint's too bad. Sorry. Okay. I'm Mand Webster. I am a studio tutor here at the Macintosh School of Architecture, but I also work in practice um, for, uh, in Cameron Webster Architects, but I'm also the co-founder of Missing in Architecture. Uh, my name's Cathy Lee. I'm part of Missing in Architecture, but I also teach here at uh, Glasgow School of Art. Haven't taught for ooh, since 2003, so I've been teaching quite a long time. I've been in practice, um, but now full-time in education. And uh, I'm Isabel Deacon, so I'm also a co-founder of Missing in Architecture and teach here at the MAC and also teach part-time down at Strathclyde. And can you describe when or where your architectural interests first developed and how that leads you through to design and study architecture? Oh, let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't remember where my idea for architecture, there's no architects in my family, there's no history of design or even going to university. So I, I, I really don't know where it came from, but it just suddenly was this thing that when I was choosing my subjects, and doing UCAS, I took an ocean, and then it took from there. So, yeah, went on a couple of sites during the summer holidays, and then um, got interested from there on. But I was very naive when I started studying architecture, so I hadn't because I had no background. I, on the other hand, had a bit of background. My dad's an architect. He was brought up with a building in a building site, very sort of. Um, familiar with modern architecture um, however that didn't really make me want to study architecture it wasn't until I'd done my hires and I realized I enjoyed art I was good at art good at English I was good at science and what could I do that fitted and I thought well you know architecture ticks all those boxes I'm going to try undergraduate I'm going to see if I enjoy it um, and I realized I did I really loved it and the school sort of opened my eyes to how you could enjoy architecture um, the study visits, the study trips were, were instrumental in that as well, the opportunities that were um, given here. But also then I suppose my year out actually was a really t big turning point in how you actually apply all of that to, to, the, to your studies. So yeah, then it became sort of serious, I'm going to be an architect. <laughs> <laughs> Be serious? Well, it's still not serious, but... Um, and I was very late in the game. I did not play with Lego. <laughs> <laughs> I did not you design cities by. at the age of five or anything <laughs> like that. And uh, a bit like Miranda, I kind of was good at a lot of things and not great at anything. <laughs> and um, I think my dad suggested it, of course, which meant that I said, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but, uh, and then I came for an interview at Strathclyde and an interview at uh, the art school and also said what am I thinking they're both at the top of hills I can't possibly do this <laughs> and then I chose Strathclyde and had the most fantastic experience um, and yeah I would I would go back and do it all again in a heartbeat and start first year again I would do it, go tomorrow. back and do it better well, yeah. <laughs> what I know different. now different. yeah certainly the, the balance was definitely when I started Probably about 60, 40, male to female. Uh, and again, I don't think as many females succeeded right the way through the course as the male students. Yeah. And, and the interesting thing is, once they go into practice, it's how many are still practicing after that because the responsibility for families is on women. It's very difficult to try and pick up a career. Not that I have children, but it's difficult to pick up a career once you're out yeah similar or work part-time yeah similar with me sort of equal male female starting off and then the sort of dwindling through the through the course and then I mean I can count on one hand how many of my contemporaries female contemporaries are still in practice just you know and that, I guess that's what missing that picture is isn't it? yeah that, yeah, it, it's, it's, one, it's one of so them. much more than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's that's, that's the yeah. thing, yeah, because of the three of us, obviously being female, um, that's something we picked up on, and it, it's that sort of the way you 
might get treated either in practice or in academia and that can be from other colleagues or it can be within you know within the student cohort you can be treated differently because you're female behaviors follow through from the education system into practice and there's some really old school methodologies of practice that actually are just outdated Um, there's still old school methodologies in you know education system as well and you know it's it's trying to sort of change those i think is really trying really important something that we're really keen to try and implement or question or you know um, address it somehow so I suppose the first thing that we did, um, I think, probably was to look at um, women in architecture and then it extended slightly beyond that to basically minorities mm-hmm. and people on the margins and people that voices weren't being heard. So um, we our initial kind of um, starting point and the launch of MIA happened on International Women's Day two. 2017 Mm -hmm. Um, and that was a fantastic event it was also um, supported by students um, and a student initiative called Another Perspective perspective. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and then we did a symposium uh, on International Women's Day 2018 uh, down at the ARC 2019 this year wasn't it this year in March (laughs) in March um, which um, was a fantastic event and we got um, a lot of diverse voices to come and speak Um, so we had Patty Hopkins open the event we had Sarah Wigglesworth uh, Harriet Harris Flora Samuel Helen Aston from Manchester Mm -hmm. we had Joss Boyce um, Joss Boyce Abigail Patel and um, Alicia, Alicia Fisher, Fisher yeah. um, and we also had some Students. alumni from here, so we had Connor, uh, K-pop, and Nadia, Nadia. Malikin. Um, so that was a really nice, I think, step for us because we were able to talk about um, what we're interested in to a lot more people um, and also find out that what we're talking about is actually relevant as well. But what's interesting about that symposium is that it was a set on a diverse um, a platform. But interestingly, there was not so much diversity in the audience because it was uh, mainly a female audience um, and very few men. And you just think, so these are the, the um, things you want to raise awareness of, but it's almost as if people that we're trying to reach aren't listening and I think that's always a bit of a frustration that's you're saying well we need to have wider conversations in architecture we need to diversify and address issues that include everybody because architects are designing for everybody and you can't just make it general unless you go into the specific and I, I think that um, it's been difficult for us to get a lot of people to, to listen a lot of people who should be listening to listen and, and that's a, fr- I think yeah. a frustration. Yeah. 